Hello everyone, today we are going to be reviewing the Lionel 1989 rendition of the Reading T1 here on Brendan's Trains. Now getting this locomotive in shot was an extreme challenge because this thing is huge. This is the biggest train I've ever reviewed on my channel. Now if you don't know how big this locomotive is, this engine is 28 and a half inches long, which makes this the third biggest locomotive of my collection. Now I'm going to do a separate video talking about the history of the T1 since the T1s have a lot of history to them. This model was made in 1989, which means that this locomotive is over 30 years old. Now back then, this was one of the very first Lionel scale models ever made. The first scale models they made of was the B6, the 785 Hudson, and the 700E Hudson. The item number for this engine is 6-18006. Now the first locomotive with rail sounds was the B6 and it was item, item number 6-18000. And if I do the math right, this would make the seventh locomotive to have rail sounds in it. Now the sounds from this locomotive is not what you get in engines like Legacy or Proto Sound 3. The sounds you get from this engine is a chuff, a whistle, a bell, and steam background sounds. Now, despite this locomotive not having as much sounds as some of my other locomotives, I really like the sounds from this thing. I just think it sounds really cool. Now, I know you guys want to see the details of this engine, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. Here is a look on the pilot of the engine. Now here we have some nice suicide steps on either side, a very nice molded and coupler. We have a separately applied grab iron right here. We have a very nice Reading Lines plaque on the front of the radiator. Then on either side, we have some nice molded and air compressors and the beginning of the separately applied mill handrails that go all the way back to the cab. Here is the look on the front of the boiler. We have some very nice rivet detailing alongside the smoke box door. We have a little brass bell, really nice. Some number boards on each side of the operating headlight. We have a number board down here. And of course the front of the boiler swings open like that. Very nice. Here's a look on the sides of the engine. We have some very nice yellow lining across the running board. We have some nice pilot trucks right here. Above it, we have a very nicely detailed full cylinder with some piping. And here's the beginning of the drive wheels and the drive rods, and all this stuff looks great when the engine is in motion. You'll see that in just a few minutes. And underneath the running board, we have some very nice molded and detailing. Towards the rear of the engine, we have the trailing wheels right here. And here we have the big firebox. Now the T1s were distinctive because they had these ginormous fireboxes which burned the anthracite coal. Now since this engine was made in 1989, there's not gonna be a lot of separately applied detailing. But on the cab, we have a very nice crisp 2100 and a T1 logo down there. Here we have some windows with no clear plastic inserts in them. And then on each side of the cab, we have some separately applied grab irons on either side. Here's a look on the left-hand side of the engine. Now, it looks pretty much the same as the right-hand side, but we do have some differences in detail. Here's a look on top of the engine. Here we have a very nice separately applied feed water heater right here. There's a smokestack, and there is a fan-driven smoke unit down in there. And as always, to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you simply pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. Behind the smoke stack, we have the continuation of the two separately applied metal handrails. Then we have this piece here. If you know what this piece here is, please let me know. Then behind it, here we have the sand dome. Behind the sand dome, we have a steam dome and there's a brass plated whistle right here. Then we have a dynamo generator back here. And then we have some pop-off valves, but they're painted black for some reason. Here's a look on top of the cab. There's some nice rivet detailing. 
Now there's two vents, but they do not open. They're just molded in. Here's a look on the inside of the cab. Now there is not very much detail in there because back in 1989, Lionel did not think to put cab detailing in there. But we do have the back head, which is modestly detailed, like I said. Then there's a cord here, which connects the engine and tender together. And here is the drawbar. Now, I really like the drawbar on this engine because it closely couples the engine and tender together, so it looks more realistic. All right, that takes care of the engine. Now let's go and check out the tender. Now, what a beautiful tender we have here. This is not a tender you would normally see on an engine when there's little to no rivet detailing. But one thing I must warn you is it's best to wear gloves when handling the tender, otherwise you will get fingerprints on there. But on the tender, we have a very nice Redding logo on the side. We have some very nice truck detailing. Now there's no chains or anything on them. And on front of the tender, we have some separately applied grab irons on either side. And here is the receiving socket for the engine and tender. And here's where the drawbar is where you connect the engine and tender together. Here is a look on top of the tender. Here we have a colo, but it's plastic because back in 1989, Lionel did not think to do real colos back then. But here we have some separately applied grab irons alongside the tender. We have a water hatch that's molded in so it does not open. And as you can see, there is no rivet detailing on this tender, which is what I really like. Here's a look on back of the tender. We have an operational backup light right here. Then we have a very nice separately applied ladder right here. Some nice separately applied steps on either side. We have some nice legible signage right here. And then we have a coupler here that does fly open manually, but this thing does not have an electrocoupler, unlike some other engines. All right, the last thing we are going to do before I start this engine up is to mention my favorite feature on this engine. Now, my favorite feature of the T1 is something unusual, which I really don't really choose, but it is actually the drive wheels, and this makes the T1 look unlike any other engine in my collection. And I looked on all the other wheels of my engines, and I've never seen wheels of this design. So my favorite feature of this engine is the drive wheels. All right, let's go ahead and start this beast up. So you can hear the idle sounds. Here's the bell. Here's the whistle. Let's go ahead and move her out. Okay, that wraps it up for this review. This is a great engine. I'm happy to own it, and it's a heck of a lot of fun to run. Now, if you want to find one of these, you can still find them on eBay for 400 to 500 bucks. I picked up mine brand new from the train show for $450, which is not bad for this engine. Anyways, that's it for now. This is Brendan's Trains, signing off.